Hi friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my bookish life. Today we're going to check in on my reading from May 9th to May 18th. So let's get to it. Since my last check-in, I have finished three books and I am currently in the middle of one book and about to start a whole bunch of books today. So <laughs> there's a lot happening. So two of the books that I was currently reading last time I checked in, I have now finished. The one that I had just started, I am about 60% through. So the first book that I finished this week was The Women by Kristen Hanna. This was a book club book for one of my in real life book clubs. And it really is a book that infuriated me. I was very mad most of the time that I was reading this book. Uh, mostly because the characters were veterans, were treated terribly, and uh, it's true to life in how Vietnam veterans and veterans in general are, can be treated and that's devastating and not right and infuriating <laughs> and I really struggled a lot with reading this reading this book at some times this has to do with the women that were involved in the Vietnam War especially the nurses involved in the Vietnam War following one woman's perspective which threw a whole bunch of people off when they were doing their reviews for this book because they expected more perspectives <laughs> it goes through her time in Vietnam and also her time home from Vietnam and the changes that occur in her, in her personality and how the war affects her. And it's, it's just, it's really, it's really devastating and it's really terrible and horrible. And I just, oh, I felt sick to my stomach a lot of times reading it. This was my first Kristen Hanna and I distinctly remember talking to uh, Krista from Books and Jams about this book and saying, I just feel like she's punching you in the face, giving you ice so it feels a little bit better. And then when it's just about to be healed, she punches you in the face again. Like, is that like, is that what she's doing? And, and Chris is like, yeah, that's basically what it is. And that doesn't super sit right with me, but also she's kind of a fabulous storyteller and so I am very torn with that. I'm definitely going to be reading more Kristen Hanna. Will absolutely need to prepare myself <laughs> for the reading of the Kristen Hanna books, but it's a fabulously told in-depth research was involved in the writing of this book and you can tell in so many different ways and I absolutely love that. There is so much to hate about this book in that it is true to life but there's so much to like about it and so much good that comes from being aware of our history and the mistakes that have been made in the past and how those can be not repeated. I, it was definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. So I was able to talk to a lot of people about this, which was very helpful in helping me sort through it. I ended on four stars. I thought that some of the punching in the face was unnecessary. The next book that I finished was also for book club because this was my week of book clubs with all of my book clubs landing on this week. It has been crazy, but also, you know, is what it is and I kind of love it. So for my other in real life book club, I cannot find the copy of my book, but I have my dust jacket here. I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I love that I got a book of the month book uh, off my TBR. I absolutely loved uh, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery. It was one of my favorite books two years ago. I can't even put into words how much I love that book. I loved so much about this curmudgeonly man who falls in love with a publishing bookseller, uh, uh, the bookseller for a publishing company and adopts a little girl and just 
finds purpose in life and it just makes me cry thinking about it. This is not that. This is not that. Uh, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. It's, it's, it's fine. It was a, it was a good story. I felt bombarded in the face by drug use. I don't really know even how to describe it. Sadie and Sam are two friends who suffer from not knowing how to communicate with each other. And it never actually says in here, but my book wife and I, when we talked about it, we were like, are these two characters neurodivergent? Because they both very much seem like the reason for the miscommunication is that they're both literally unable to understand. And it kind of helps my frustration with the miscommunication to um, think of them in that way. Um, there's a trauma response that like, there's just so much, so much going against these two and how they're able to uh, communicate with others, communicate with each other, figure out what's going on in their life. And it just, I felt heartbroken for these characters and what they were going through. Sam and Sadie were friends. They bonded over a love of playing video games when they were uh, young. And one of them was in the hospital and one of them was visiting a sick sister. And they bonded together. And due to a miscommunication, they stopped being friends only to run into each other later, years later. And, um, they decide to make a video game together and it starts this roller coaster of an adventure in them starting a business, having a business and just trying to understand each other and their life and how it's happening. In a lot of ways, this is a really beautiful story about friendship and found families and all of the wonderful things that I love about those kinds of tropes. And it's told in this really interesting way that was really annoying to my sister, but I absolutely loved in that it's almost you know, like one of those biography in-depth stories where you're kind of like catching bits and pieces of the story of something as they are telling you what has happened in their life. And it's just like this in-depth expose, I guess. And I really, I really enjoyed that format. I thought it was really interesting and really added a lot to it. Um, but I can also see how that would be really annoying if it's not a format that you vibe with. I, I did enjoy the story in a lot of ways, but there was so so much vulgarity in this. There was so much drug use. There was so much. I don't, I, I can only, only describe as manipulation and masked sexual assault. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow is such a random reference in the book. You're waiting the whole book to figure out why it's called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. It should have been called Sex, Drugs, and Video Games. Because that's what this book was. <laughs> but like I said, there was the found family. There was friendships. There was so much beauty in the story, but also so much insanity absolutely insane. <laughs> most of my friends online, most of my friends on Goodreads, most of the people that I follow on Goodreads have all loved this book and I can see why, but also I gave it three stars because some of the stuff I just felt was over the top. I love this cover, but I do think that I'm going to unhaul this book because it's just, it's just not AJ Fickery. Then the third book that I finished uh, was actually sent to me by 
and author. I have a video coming out this week that is a try a chapter of middle grade books that I've been sent by authors. This book actually came after I filmed that video, but it was sent to me in the same manner. There was a giveaway. I entered the giveaway. I was very lucky because it is not a Goodreads giveaway. So, you know, um, it was wonderful. The author was Brina Bard, and she wrote a book that takes place in the Wisconsin Northwoods. Uh, it's a graphic novel called Trespassers, and I read it a couple years ago. I have it. It's signed, I really think. If you want me, it's in my classroom. It's not around here. Um, my students love it. They think it's really cool because they can recognize all of the uh, North woodsiness of Wisconsin and most of them have cabins or vacation up there quite often. So my students really like the story. I really love the story. So when she was doing this giveaway for her newest book, Wildfire, I absolutely was interested in that. And then she also sent, this is an older book. This was published in 2011. And this one is 2023, I think. So she sent both of these. It was like a, um, an Earth Day kind of giveaway. And uh, both of these deal with conservation, protecting the planet, things like that. And so Wildfire is the one that I have read. I haven't gotten to this one, but I wanted to show it because I think it's really cool that I was able to get it from the author. And I just... I'm kind of excited to read this one. I just haven't gotten to it yet. This one actually takes place in California. And then this one takes place in Oregon. So this is the one that I read. It's Wildfire. And I, Juliana is the main character. And she lives on a farm, on this small farm with her family. She loves her goats, her chickens, um, cats. Like, she just loves being on the farm, being out in the country. And she sees a group of boys playing with fireworks when there is a burn ban happening in their town. And she kind of yells at them, but then doesn't really say anything about it. And a wildfire starts. And she is evacuated with her family. They lose everything. And she ends up moving to Portland, Oregon with her family. And she's trying to go from being a country girl who loves being out in the country to being a city girl who doesn't have a big yard to have a bunch of animals. And, and she has to change schools. And she goes to this new school and she meets the kids that are part of the conservation club, which is affectionately called Club Connie which I did not get at first. And I'm so embarrassed by that. <laughs> Conservation. Uh, but what they do is they get together all the time and they do different like projects to help with conservation efforts. They learn about different things that are affecting the environment. And it is just really uh, an interesting way to bring actual facts into a written story. And I love Juliana. She's such a strong character and she's so conflicted with different things. It really talks about how small things can make a difference in what you're doing and how you're living your life. And it's just, it's really a great story. And I just really enjoyed reading it. I sat down and just read it um, because one, uh, it came in the mail and <laughs> had been kind of sitting and staring at me for a little while. But then in my last books and treasure box, I got this card game of TBR scratch offs and it is a book with one word title. And so wildfire is one word. I was able to finish this card with that, which um, I'm very excited about and I really also loved it. So I'm very excited to share this one with my students uh, and also excited to get to this one. So we'll see. And I am going to go ahead and scratch another card because I'm done with this one. All right. I hope you can see this because it's in front of my face so I can't actually see my screen so I don't know if you can see it. So I'm just going to grab this one doesn't really matter if I could see it or not because they're all covered. I don't know why I was so whatever about that. Okay. So let's 
so it matches up. The book that takes place. Ooh. <laughs> This is actually kind of perfect. <laughs> so my new prompt is a book that takes place over, okay, this is over, over 100 years ago. And this is actually really perfect because for my role of reading prompt, I got a red cover written in the 1990s that's 151 pages to 300 pages long that is historical fiction and uh, the book that I have chosen um, has read on the cover it actually has read in the title it is a middle grade historical fiction about the Revolutionary War <laughs> which was over a hundred years ago so I will actually have this one done um, within the next couple weeks. So I'm kind of excited about that. That is a perfect prompt. Thank you for indulging in my sidetrack there. In terms of what I'm currently reading, I am still working on Road Trips, Blue Skies, and Dead Guys. This book I'm really enjoying. I've been reading it in a packets of time before I go, right before I go to bed and I am 60% done with it. I probably will finish it tonight or tomorrow. Also, I am going to be starting um, 84 Charing Cross Road this weekend because uh, Silent Book Club is this weekend and that is what we're reading the epistolary uh, novels for, and that is the book that I've chosen for that. And lastly, I want to start Lock Every Door this week. Lock Every Door, I'm reading for the Buzzword Reading Challenge. So those are the books that I am looking at getting into and digging into. So I'm very excited about that. And that's all I have for you for today. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the books that I've talked about, uh, especially the ones that I finished. My two book club books this month were definitely outside my norm um, and a little bit outside my comfort zone. And I'm so glad that I read both of them. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. I love chatting with you down there, commenting, liking, and subscribing it really help my channel grow. And I so appreciate you for doing that. I hope you're finding something wonderful to read. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.